So I had a look around and I wanted to do a dashboard that was quite close to what is being done these days with the latest software, give a bit of a more modern look if you like. So I came up with this. There is a color coded component here. So we have a task and a stage and the idea is when you change the, the stage, I call it stage, I could have called it teams. Uh, that, that changed the color here and here. Uh, if I can change it again and there is also a rag status and then there is the progress that can change based on the percentage that you input there high level view and also the, the priority towards the end uh, that's changed also that seems to be something that is being seen more and more uh, I never really looked at it but if people want it why not provide it to them let's get started so the first thing to do is to go uh, build a bit of a grid this way the very light gray the lightest gray maybe that you can find uh, here I have put a darker one but this one here will be good I put a darker one so it's more obvious when when you look at it and then so you have a stream you have a stage and then more uh, closer together you have three cells for rack status and then you have five cells also close together for the progress and on top of each cell I have 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 so th that means 20% 40% 60% and I will use this to show the progress. And then we have a schedule status, so that will be done automatically, but we need a bit more room for this. And then there's a priority also for five cells, sorry, that are quite close together. And on top, one, two, three, four, five, we will also use this for conditional formatting later on. If you want to do this uh, dashboard, you should go ahead and, and prepare something like this. And on the left-hand side, there are three fields here. The priority of the task, the rack status that we will be uh, doing between one and three and then the completion percentage so the idea is to hide those fields uh, into in, on our dashboard we'll be hiding them uh, but they will be driving the content of the dashboard but we won't show them so let's have a look at this grid here and let's build this uh, one by one let's let's just hide this for the moment the first thing we want to do is to put some tasks, obviously. Uh, so we put some tasks and after we put the stage that it is in. So what we can do is we can create a separate tab called validation tab, for instance. And then we will create a small table like this where we will put the values that are allowed. We create a stage like this with a field name and a stage validation. So we can create four stages this way, for instance, and for each stage we ensure that we name it so we can name this one stage one we can name this one st stage two stage three stage four i've just put that here so that we know how we uh, named our fields so this way later on we can just change this uh, if we want to put something different and then we'll just have to go back to our dashboard and change it from this uh, pre-selection field here so in order to do this validation here, in case you don't know how to do it, so we go into data and we press data validation, data validation this way, and we select a list. List, and then we go over there, we just select this, and then we select those four, and we want to say that we are, we'll be pre-selecting this from this four list here. So we don't worry about the color, we'll do that later on. So we have our task, we have our stage, and then uh, I know it's counterintuitive, but we put some information about that task on the left hand side because, as mentioned, we'll be hiding it later on. So the priority from one to five seems uh, fair enough, provides enough uh, granularity, I suppose. A rag from one to three, uh, if you want to also pre select it to make sure that users uh, don't input the wrong thing, you can do. So it's the same process. Uh, you go to data, data validation and after you go here and you put those. Just the only thing I've changed here just to make it really clear for users is I've added this. If you go to data validation here, where you can put in data in this data validation, you can put an in, uh, input message, which is quite useful in this scenario. So in a title I've put select a rag and after one low, two medium, three high, and I went to, uh, I skipped a line every time to make it clearer. So therefore here they have this vision, which I think it's a, it's a little bit better to understand. 
Okay, so that, that will drive the rag. Oh, by the way, I have the flag here because that's an earlier version. I, I hesitated between putting the flag and the red lights and after I thought oh, I'm going to go with the red light. So this one can be hidden here for the time being. So let's go back to this. So we have our, our uh, task, we have our stage, we have input all this. I didn't mention completion, but that's pretty obvious how much of the task has been completed. So the first thing we can do is to apply this uh, color coding as, um, as shown here. So project management this color, business analysis this color, stage three this color, and then that. So how do we do that? So we do a conditional formatting. We go home, conditional formatting, and then we create a rule. So I've already created it. Uh, so what we, what we need to do when we create the rules, we to use a formula to determine which cells to format. And as we have the name, as we have put the name already, it's easier to refer to. So here, for instance, if the field here itself is equal to stage four, then I put this color here. So how does it work? If I go here, that's the stage four, and I should have this color. And here, obviously, if I put the stage four to testing, it will have this color. So let's put it back there. So just to show you, just in case you didn't see the, the full thing. And we do that for every named field. One, two, three, four, different color. And we apply this to the whole colon here. We apply this to the whole colon. Now that we have allocated a color to this, I've created some squares here, so I've noticed that they have that on some fancy dashboard these days, but they have more a square, but also I put, a, they have more a, a circle, sorry, but I put a square because I'm using already a, a, a circle on for the rack status, and I thought that'd be a bit confusing. So for this, what is this? This is actually a character. So I've inserted a character here, a symbol, insert symbol, and you go wing this too, and you have it here, so this, and you will make sure that the font stay at in, uh, wing this too. So this is more or less a character. So the conditional formatting should be around the character itself, should be around the font, not the cell background. So we go back to our conditional formatting. These days, those dashboards with Excel, it's all about conditional formatting. So what have I done here? So I've done the same thing uh, that I've done for stage, but the difference is that if I go back to the first one, I use the formula, but I use the value of the stage here. I didn't use the value of the cell itself, obviously, because it, there's nothing in it. There's only a square. So if the value is stage one, I put this, and you might think it's a little bit tedious, but it's actually quite quick to do because we can uh, duplicate rules. You create one first and then you just duplicate four times and after you just have to change the two, three, four and a color and a allocated color. So that's it. So that's done. So we already have uh, this that will follow the color. We will have this that will follow the color. So the next step is the rack status. So if you don't know what the rack status is, I, I have a, a, a link uh, in this video. I have another video on, on rack status if you want to have a look at it. That might help. It's more or less a light that tells you how healthy the project is or the task is. RAG is something very personal that you would put yourself. So this is why I don't calculate it. You would put a value between one and three when you want to draw attention to something specific about this. So in order to do this, I have created three cells here that are close together. And the idea is if the RAG status is one, I will highlight this character in green. If it's two, this one in number, and if it's three, this one in red. The first thing is to insert as we've done for the square, but instead we go back to wingdings and we insert a circle or a disc. Oops, we insert it here. And we, en we ensure that the font is wingdings two, and then we copy for all those cells. And, but we give a default value because for this, they will always be colored, but for this one, there are instances where they won't be colored. So we select all the cells and we give them a default value. And what I have put here as a default value is a darker gray. So it stands out, it's not the same gray. And then I can start my conditional formatting. So for this, I can 
hard code. I could have put uh, the same trick as here, one, two, three, but it's only three values. So I think that'll be quite clear. So if I manage the rule here, now I don't need to, to check one, two, and three, because I know for this field here, it can only be green or off. So how do I, I just need to check if this, if this uh, the rag here is, uh, is green and I ensure that I lock uh, the colon so this will be able to copy it across. So I lock the colon with a dollar C here and if the, the rag is one, then I will put the font of this, not the, the background font in green. So this is how you do it. You go to the font and you put it in green. Okay, so once this is done, we can drag it down. And that will be for all the first columns because we only check green. And then we go to the amber. So amber, you guessed it, same stuff. But the big difference is we put the rag at two, of course. Otherwise, there'll be a bit of a big mess. So we just uh, put two and then we select the, the rule and then we go for the color amber, more or less, voila. Okay, and the third one, the red one. So for this one, uh, it's the same, but as I often say, please make sure that you use a red that is not too aggressive. You know, the standard Microsoft red is a bit aggressive. Just play with the value of the red. You know, I, I would go here, for instance, and here I will make sure that it's not too aggressive, so I'll push this up to make sure that it's um, not too much in your face because this is more or less the pastel <laughs> dashboard. It's not the type of dashboard that will be screaming at you and say, wow, but it will be more the, okay, this is this is my update. Everything is okay. Everything is red, but everything is okay. So it's a, it's a bit more subtle. Uh, okay, so for progress, so for progress, that's interesting. We have five fields here. And I just wanted to show very high level progress status here. People need to be interested in your dashboard. You don't want them to be lost into it. So here, this is where I will be using my 0 0.2, 0 0.4. And how does it work? So first of all, I put everything in the darker gray as I've done before. This will be the default value. You put a darker gray. And if you have the same dark gray than this one, that will look even better than the, the circles there. So what we do is we do a conditional formatting again. So what we do is we have uh, two things to check this time. Because it's not just a matter of filling the cell. We want to fill the cell with the color of the stage here or the team. So we need to check two things. So usually use a formula to determine which cells to format. So that's, that's a tick. But we have to put an AND here. AND. If the stage is the stage four, we check that field here. If here we have stage four and completion percentage is greater or equal to this, then this cell should be turned on. It's a combination. So this cell will be highlighted if the progress is greater than 20%, greater or equal than 20%. And it will be the same for the others. So if this cell is greater or equal than that 20%, then we will turn this one on with the color of this. So this is why we need to, to have four different tests. We don't need to have five, one for each colon because we are using this value here. So every time the conditional formatting moves, we'll use the value on top. So this will be done automatically. So that, that is quite uh, efficient. So we're gonna have four and then we keep going. And, uh, and then for this one, it will be the green and the likes. The next colon is calculated automatically. So this is the usual ifs here. If the completion is one, which means 100%, then I put done. If uh, the completion is zero, then I put not started. And for the rest, I will put in progress. If it's not one or zero, then it's in progress. There's something in between, so it'll be in progress. So this will bring me back the text. But what I would like to do is to put also a bit of a, of a color-coded stuff. So here you notice I only have two. If it's one completed, I put done. And if it's greater than zero, I put in progress. 
And the reason why I didn't put the third one not started is because this, this would be the default value. The default value, I will put this, this color here, not started. And now we are in the stars. So it's pretty similar to the progress stuff. But first of all, I need to insert a star. It's a winged thing. So I go to insert symbol and I select winged things and winged things and we should have a star somewhere here. So this, uh, here you go. So that's a star that I brought back. By default value, also put a gray, but the same gray, it will look much better if you have the same gray than this one and this one. So you just put, it's a font, so you just put a, a automatic font here. You just put a, a darker gray, I put a second here. So what do we need to do now? Well, it's it's easy now. We, we know how it works. We do a conditional formatting of the font here. Uh, we go to conditional formatting and we go to manage rules and same thing. Use a formula to determine which else to format. And for as we've done for the progress, if the priority here is greater or equal to this value here, then we will highlight the star. So if it's one, obviously it's highlighted. Um, but if we put three, for instance, it will be highlighted as well because this is greater or equal and would be same for this one will be highlighted because it's free and this will not be highlighted because it's smaller. So that's pretty, so that's the way it works. We have one stream here. You can just copy and paste to get more streams. If you want, don't want to put project management, as mentioned, you can put something else here. You can put uh, uh, maybe the stage itself, stage one. And then you will need to go there and, and pre-select which stage that you want to, to have, stage one here. A debatable, but what you can do is, I've seen that, that might be a little bit too overwhelming, but uh, I've seen also some dashboard who like to highlight stuff like this, uh, because they have a different types of color for extreme. So you would do this and you would take a very light color for each one and here you would go back to the blue otherwise it's going to be too hard on the eyes and uh, that's another way to put it so you go it's a little bit more visible now uh, you can close this and so the way i'm uh, the way i'm doing this is if you don't know the trick is you just select all those columns you go into data and you group and when the, once you grouped it's like they are hidden but they are much easier to unhide so you just click on this and the same for this, I don't really want to show that. So I will just hide it this way. So here you have a dashboard and you can put a fancy title on top. If you're interested in this flag here that I've hidden, uh, let me unhide it. And I could hide those instead. So that's a, another look that you could go for. You would go here, you would go icon set, uh, icon set and you would select this as a first step. And after you would go back and you would go to manage rules and you put edit rules and this is where you can play around with it. So here what I had was if the flag is greater or equal to free, then they, can, they don't let you put equal to. So if it's greater or equal to free, I put this red flag and then you would put, uh, you do the same if it's between three and two, you put this amber flag. And if it's smaller than two, you would put the green flag. So that's another look that, that you could go for. And that's it. Thanks for watching. And I'll have plenty more of those coming our way. So if you're interested, you know what, what to do. Cheers.